Type Afghanistan into Google and see what you find. Bombings. An explosion ripped through a wedding in Kabul, Afghanistan, killing dozens of people. In War. Crisis. <laughs> these are normally the pictures that come to mind when you hear the name Afghanistan. But are these tragic events really that common? Yes, tragedy strikes Afghanistan on a daily basis, a country at war for 40 years. But is there another side to Afghanistan that is rarely covered? Let's find out. The world's deadliest conflict. The war should end in Afghanistan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We will smile towards life because life is worth smiling. Not a day without violence. We will show that resilience. We will not allow people to know that we have weakened. Our families shed blood for this country. Okay, so we've just come to a local bazaar uh, and it's uh, very action-packed. We're gonna try and uh, see how the locals prepare their food. It's mainly fruit and vegetables. And then we're gonna try and interview a, a few locals. Salaam alaikum. Salaam Good morning, sir. <laughs> So here again with uh, Aryan today. Hi guys. We're gonna be translating again. Uh, so we've come to the trucks where uh, all the uh, lemons get delivered. We're just gonna interview the the man who's selling them, right? Yeah. yeah. Can you ask him what time he got here this morning? I brought so chan baje jama this morning. So baje five baje. Five o'clock. Business going well today. Bazaar a khub asal ek zara. Bazaar ki baarani baje chhi baje baz. Bazaar a kharaab asal khub as. Bazaar khub as. Uh, so it's been very good because recently it's been very peaceful and there's security. So when there's security, the uh, selling is very good. People come and buy. Amniyat khubish boshar, na faram ziyada marketam karubaram khubish me boshar. So if there's uh, there is peace, normally you see a lot of people coming in very easily, very comfortably. They buy, but when there is insecurity, uh, you don't see many many people here. People are staying home. How many years has he been selling? Is it oranges or is it lemon? The gar chize mirumi na orange. I've been 10 years and it depends on the good season. Sometimes I sell cucumbers, sometimes I sell cauliflower, sometimes I sell tomatoes, potatoes, but today is the day for the orange. Amir is 21 years old and he sells uh, whatever that he can lay his hand on any given day such so as just, just take bread home. So what I do is that after a lot of argument and bargaining I give 1000 uh, pieces of this for uh, 1500 Fs right. but then I make a 500 Fs profit after a one day long day I make 500 Fs profit which I split, leave the, some of it for the next day to buy more and some of it to go take home. And is that enough to uh, keep him living an okay life? I have eight members family. Uh, I'm happy because uh, I find work and I'm not without work. Uh, so it's any given day, sometimes I make less, sometimes I make more. But on the average is 400 Fs, uh, 500 Fs, that's almost $10 a day. Uh, so he's happy with that. Does he enjoy living in Mazari? Yeah, I'm happy here. All around are my countrymen. I'm happy among them. We enjoy, we live. So, yeah. Okay. That's we just 
met up with one of the drivers here. I'm just going to ask him a few questions about if there's enough work and if he's finding transport and things. Uh, Mohammed Yassin is uh, 55 years old. Uh, he's been doing this for 10 years. Uh, he makes 200 apps, uh, $4 a day, and then some days he doesn't even get work. Uh, it's, it's difficult for him looking at his uh, clothes and everything, but uh, he tries very hard to uh, make it up uh, the next day by staying late or coming early uh, and making more money so that he can feed his family. Patrick. Oh, is 28 years old. Uh, uh, he's having this uh, hand count. Uh, what he says that he has uh, run 80,000 uh, apps, uh, which is about $2,000 debt. And he's been trying to pay it for uh, almost two years now because he makes 150 apps, uh, $3 a day. And how did he get the debt? So my, my father, uh, uh, he's dead now, but he was the one who took money from a, a person. Now he's dead when the person comes to me every day and says that pay up, it's your father's debt and I'm so I'm paying that debt now. So the owner of this market, he throws a party like once a month for everyone to be fed. So we are going there to see the big pots and everything. You see the locals are very friendly and wanting to chat and things and, um, you know, working super hard for a uh, little return, but um, obviously food and things are aligning with the hello. Salam. Food and things are ali aligning with the salaries. So we've been invited to this party, right? Yeah, we're okay. invited to this party. Uh -huh. uh, so they're making palau. Palau is a famous Afghan dish with rice, nice. uh, carrots, and almonds, and raisins. Mm -hmm. And so the entire market is invited to this. Right. So this is the head chef behind us. So, Hazrat Rahman is 60 years old and uh, he's been cooking palau uh, since he was 20 years old. So for 40 years he's been cooking this. This is his speciality. Oh, but do you want to film more or no? Is this who are these gentlemen? So he's the head of this market. Okay, so yeah. he's putting on this whole meal. Yeah, yeah. And so why does he put on the? Why does he decide to feed everybody for free? This is what normally we do because it shows our unity. Right. It brings our people together, and we spend some time together because here in this market we have people from all over the provinces close to Balkh. Uh -huh. All the poor people come here and they find some. Uh, they went bread for their families, so right. that's why it's a very important place. Cheers. Tashiko. We've just come down the road to a facility called Nori Koda facility. It's where malnourished kids get treated and things. We're going to show you a bit about the process. I'm going to put it in a digestible form, if you pardon the pun, um, and try and um, relay to you the situation here. It should be interesting because you saw the market, you saw how people live over there on very little money. And then we're going to come here to uh, the absolute extreme. Can be more efficient. Cool, so we've come inside the facility and this is Maureen from UNICEF and what's your role at UNICEF? Um, I'm the Chief of Nutrition for UNICEF in Afghanistan. Okay. So I oversee all of the nutrition programming in the country. So we are in um, uh, Nurhada, it's a health facility in Mazar, 
um, which is in the northern part of Afghanistan, and it provides different services for, for the people of um, this area. And amongst those, they provide um, nutritional treatment to children who are affected by severe acute malnutrition. And so these kids here, what exactly is the issue? Why, why are they coming here? So mothers will bring their children because they're severely malnourished, which means they've really reached a point where their bodies are very, very thin for their height um, and so they need to re receive treatment in order to recover and re-establish themselves to be able to play again and, to, and to, to thrive as a child. So we've just come into the clinic and we've met a mother. Uh, would you mind introducing them to us, Ariel? My name is Golgotai. I'm 20 years old. My child has been sick for some time. So I have visited this clinic before. Zikrullah is one year old. Zikrullah was three months old when he started having severe diarrhea uh, and pneumonia at the same time, which resulted in him losing a lot of weight. Uh, he stopped uh, taking breast milk. That made it very difficult for me. I went to my aunts and to my sisters and to other uh, neighbors if he would take breastfeeding from them but he the child refused he wouldn't take it that resulted in losing a lot of weight so I had no option but seeking any means because I have one child and he's very precious to me when he was six months old he stopped eating again and that time he became very severe again uh, I was told that uh, there's no way uh, that we can treat him in, uh, in Mazar he has to be taken to Kabul we are very poor we cannot afford taking him to Kabul. So I said that this precious one either dies here or will survive here. It was almost like after uh, I was even recovering from my C-section, but even then he required blood and we couldn't afford to buy blood. I was very frail and weak myself, but uh, I said that I will give my son my own blood. It was severe winter when we were told to shift him to Kabul. So what I decided was that I will buy a powdered milk and started feeding with powdered milk and you cannot imagine how difficult it is to get up in that cold winter in a freezing room and boil water for the child and then prepare that powdered milk and give it to him and then on top of it hear from neighbors and my family that I'm doing this on purpose I'm not feeding the child my own milk and I cried most of the nights I had to go through a difficult c-section I had to go through, through so much I give this child my own blood then I wake up in the middle of the night in this cold and prepare and look at what I'm hearing. But I don't care. This is my child. And now I'm happy because he's gaining weight. And this is the world for me. It's been very difficult finding even uh, 50 cents uh, to come uh, to take a two hours drive to come to this clinic. So two weeks I waited and then this morning I told my husband that I'm going to go on foot. A lady from the neighbor, she gave me 50 cents. Uh, so I can come here and now I don't have even money to go back home but uh, I'm here I want to see my child recover I have come this morning I have not eaten anything uh, but that's all doesn't matter I want to see my child I want him to be loved as I love him she must be happy now that her baby is going to live a healthy life right yes yes I'm happy my husband is very happy but again when I go home and I tell him that now he's seven kg they laugh at me so I cannot even tell my family, my relatives about the good news. So I just whisper it to myself. I'd rather tell myself that now he's gaining weight. Now uh, he's put on, he's, reco he's recovering. So we are both happy. Me and my husband are very happy about that. Okay, so we've come and met a grandmother and child, is that yeah, right? And this child is malnourished, is that correct? Sohan is seven months old, uh, but is severely underweight. And they've been coming to this clinic uh, for over a month. Have they noticed the difference since they started? So, when I give birth to the child, uh, the child was half kg. Uh, but uh, now with the tropetic food things have really improved and now uh, she's gaining weight. The treatment here is free, is that right? It's all free. The treatment, the, the tropetic food they give us, everything is free. And that's covered by UNICEF? 
Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. So it's basically vital that this place is free, otherwise the children wouldn't survive. Is that correct? Yeah, it's very essential for for poor families who cannot uh, buy fruits, meat, vegetables. Uh, this is the only option left for them, and yeah. they need this help. And without it, if you go to other provinces, you will see the same situation. It's a dramatic food and the assistance from UNICEF uh, and its partners that's making this possible for the children to survive. So it's fair to say that Sahan's life has been saved by this clinic. Oh, shukr alhamdulillah. Yes, I, I have no doubt that, that it's been the, the doctors and this clinic that have helped my child survive. So I would appeal to the friends of Afghanistan, to the countries who are friends of Afghanistan, to don't seize, don't stop your uh, donation, don't stop your help, because mothers like me are waiting and are counting on this help, and without that it would be difficult to survive. So you can see those two scenarios there have just come out in front of the um, facility here. So you saw the, the child with the, um, the malnourished child who was on, a, on his way to be treated. And if you saw the first videos in Afghanistan, in Kabul, you would have seen the state that they're in when they're extremely malnourished in their skin and bone with loose skin. Those two kids are on the road to recovery, which is great. And it's through this product here, which is called an RUTF. I'll put it in a brief term for you. This is basically like a food and medicine combined. It's peanut butter mixed with some micronutrients and some other medicines um, so their gut can actually process the food because when they get to that point of malnourishment, uh, their stomach lining doesn't absorb it as well. So what this does is um, it supplies the calories but also supplies the medicines to be able to um, absorb the nutrients. So any donation will save lives, it's not a question. It's 100% guaranteed you will save lives by donating. So I'm going to leave a link down below. Only donate if you can, but um, it's very much appreciated and it, it really helps the people out here. Okay, so we've come from the clinic. We've come to a women's bazaar, and it's basically just all women running this whole bazaar. So it's quite interesting. So we're going to meet some of the local women now. Would you mind just asking them what they're making? They're making uh, Afghan dumplings with uh, vegetables called Ashak, and also the famous Afghan bread, Bulani. So what uh, she's saying is that this is a, a, a private enterprise by a, a, a girl called Habiba. Uh, what she did was that she saw that too many uh, women have some skills in cooking and other things and they don't have any place to have their own earning. So she decided to make this place with her own budget with their own expenses without asking for it so it's for for them to come here prepare food sell them prepare handicrafts sell and run their houses so we've seen the food and now this is like the handicraft materials and fabrics yeah. and things yeah the handicraft is how long has she had this shop for Eleven years, she's running this shop. Has business. I wish that there would be more assistance from the government and private sector, and help us uh, helping us expand. Because eleven years ago, I just started my business with ten dollars, and now I filled it in eleven years. Now, so I'm happy. But with more support, it will be better. So what's it like uh, being a, a woman in Afghanistan? Is it easy to live in the society? Can you have freedom starting your own business and things like that? Or is, is there some obstacles to overcome? Ten, fifteen years ago, it was very difficult being a woman in Afghanistan, but now more women are finding it easier to to work, uh, to finding it more easier to join the um, commerce and join industries and join education, sports. So it's much 
better form and compared to a decade ago, which is good. But still, more, more must be done. More. I'm a 70 years old, so it's fine for me to come here. But more young girls need to make it uh, to these shops and learn these skills and become businesswoman. So that's a, that would be a good thing. Can you just ask her how she sees the future of Afghanistan in what direction, a positive or a negative direction? <laughs> آمیش اند تو قطار دولت کشت فیلم داری که سرایش اون کالای زنی را وادار قبر قطار کند علبا سرش بالا کرد خدا ایش هم نکردی. So I've seen so many deaths over the years. I've seen just recently nine people killed in my village, all working for the government. They were just massacred, and then the government came and they dug them grave just. Beside each other, and they buried them. So many of youngsters have died. So many of our sons have died, and I've seen misery all my life. So I hope that this will stop. I hope that no other mother would have to cry anymore. You can see many different stories of these people's lives. There's some people who have lived in other countries, and obviously the older lady who's seen some horrific things in her life. But um, overall, the energy here is just really peaceful and calm, and it's really nice to see. Some of the ladies were saying to us, you know, that they hope that we, that people see this video and then they come support their business because the only problem here is there's not many customers. I mean, we're here, and there's not really anybody else apart from some kids playing here um, so they need the the customers basically so if you're in the Mazari Sharif definitely check out the uh, Women's Bazaar very lucky to be able to see these different places and all the such a varied country so far so much to see could have spent uh, hours filming in any location we've been to so far nice to see a spread of all the different kind of situations and scenes and, and people different class levels people in desperate situations people in reasonably okay comfortable situations um, but overall you know leering over everybody's head is the you know the Taliban and uh, the, the constant security threats and horrible incidents there was you know more car bombs today in Kabul they had many incidents a day people dying on a daily basis pretty much so it's heavy but at least with the, the women's rights and things, things are developing. But um, hopefully things get better with the security. So I hope you enjoyed that day. Uh, I sure found it eye-opening and equally as fascinating as pretty much every day in this country has been so far. Just before I end the video, I just want to drive home the point of these little sachets here again. Basically a food and medicine mix. It would be great if you guys can, if you're in the position to. If you're not, I completely understand and I'm not expecting you to um, put yourself out of, out of pocket or anything, but if you do have an extra any a few dollars lying around anything will help remember ten dollars will buy 30 of these I kind of look at it as a meal I know that's not scientifically what it is but this is essentially a meal and it will bring the child from death's door to being a healthy baby again like you've seen these do change lives if you do choose to donate there's no question a poor child out there will benefit ten dollars for 
30 meals, essentially. I wanna say again, UNICEF isn't paying me to say any of this. They saw my videos, they asked me if I wanted to work with them, and it was an honor, because to work in a situation like this, in a dire circumstances where you've seen the children, they're in serious need of help, it was a, a real honor to be a part of something like that, so didn't even have to think about saying yes. If you don't wanna donate, or you don't have the money, you can always share this campaign, this video, the link underneath the video on social media, and uh, together, like, it's, it's no joke, we can seriously save lives. So we've seen the power of social media when it's used for good and it can be really quite beautiful. When we all come together, we can really make big changes in this world. Any donations are pretty much guaranteed to contribute to save lives. Yes. Yeah.